Law at Work is sponsored by Perit van Niekerk, Woodhouse Mature Law, leading labour law specialists representing businesses throughout South and Southern Africa, as well as Case Law, the quick, fast and easy labour law search engine. Hello, I'm Simon Coleman and welcome to The Law at Work. The Labour Relations Act is hailed by many as one of the most progressive pieces of labour legislation. But many critics have stated that the Act is too restrictive and that it hinders business. To discuss this issue, I have with me in the studio Vic van Fieren, COO of BUSA, and Leon Lowe, Executive Director of the Free Market Foundation. Gentlemen, welcome. Hi. Uh, many of our viewers at home may not be aware of your organisation. So Vic, if you wouldn't mind, just tell us a little bit about BUSA. BUSA stands for Business Unity South Africa. We are a federation of employer organizations, so you'll find Chambers of Commerce are members of BUSA, as are professional bodies. The Black Lawyers Association would be a good example. And then your sector bodies, like the Chamber of Mines, the Iron and Steel Engineering, Industry CISA, so all those bodies. And collectively, they would all be members of BUSA. Okay. So we would be the voice of business when we deal with government internationally at the International Labour Organization, World Excellent. Bank, etc. Right. So, so we're the voice of business, really. Thank you. Leon, a little bit about the Free Market Foundation. Yeah, the Free Market Foundation is the oldest, uh, I think undoubtedly the most influential independent public policy think tank or institute in Africa. Uh, one of the only ones that's internationally recognized uh, from the South, from the Third World. And what we do is do research and publications and we uh, try to influence government policy, as our name implies, in a free market direction. We'd like to see less tax, less intervention, less regulation, more personal and economic freedom. Less restrictions, basically. Um, coming back to the subject at hand, um, the Labour Relations Act obviously been in place now for a number of years. Uh, the CCMA seems to be inundated with uh, general unfair labour practice cases. I'd like to just spend a little bit of time talking about the legislation. A lot of people, uh, the media has been full of stories for quite some time now about the fact that the Act may be a little bit too restrictive. Do you have any comments on that, Vic? Yes, I think when, when the Act was drafted, uh, both from Labour and from business, there were areas that both sides of the coin were not satisfied with. So it's a compromised piece of legislation. And so when we talk about review and we start, and start looking at various facets of the law, business certainly would like to see some changes that can improve the business climate. But we're not looking at the changing the architecture of the law. We think that the architecture is sound for our current um, situation in South Africa. And, and we would not want to see a major overall. It would bring about too many changes, and I don't think we're ready for anything in that line. Uh, right. And we'd go back to square one in terms of uh, negotiations with trade unions and standoffs, and we don't think we, we need that. So we see more of a tweaking, um, identifying specific areas. We've had yes. uh, a number of years to see where we can improve and where we can't improve. And we as business are now targeting those areas where we think we can, uh, that can add value. But in essence, the, the basics of it, that, that's working. The basics, we say, are working okay. and should remain in place. Okay. Leon, from you. Well, it, I mean, Vic's right that it works for the parties. That's the employers and the employees. It's uh, been a, quite an effective set of laws for resolving and dealing with disputes between them. The problem is not so much the parties, Vic and the unions, uh, but the people who aren't in the loop, that is emergent and uh, small businesses, people that would want to go into business, and of course the unemployed and the unskilled, and disadvantaged in various forms, elderly people, uh, mm. rural migrants and so on. Uh, so uh, what the law does is it raises the cost and risk of employing so somebody. i stop you there, Leon. Yeah. How, how do we look after these people? Well, we don't. We, we try to have social grants. Basically, they look after themselves by just going into the underground economy, which means the illegal economy. So right. people live by just ignoring the law, breaking the law, both as employers and employees and simply as independent businesses, self-employed. Yes, yes. uh, so if you raise the cost and risk of doing something, you have less of it. Yes. And if you subsidize it, you have more of it. So yes. if you raise the cost and risk of employing people, which the labor law does, less people have a job. Those who have a job are perfectly happy. By the way, for business, many people think it's a sort of labor law is anti-business. Not true at all. As long as all businesses are subjected to the same rules of the game, it's like the cost of electricity. Exactly. You don't argue about Cause, it. Because there does seem to be that perception. No, it's not. 
business saying versus, about that. It's not business versus labor. Yes. That's a misconception. Yes. Well, I think I mean, the point that Leon touches on in terms of the small business, the emerging business, that yes. is certainly one of the areas that we've identified that we can change the labor law or make improvements in terms of addressing that issue. We don't need to increase the informal sector. We need to bring people into the yes. formal sector. Yes. And the emerging businesses do find it tough to understand the law, number one, and to, to apply it. And yes. so they tend to go underground. So many of the proposals that we put on the table have to do with the emerging business market, yes. um, the small and micro enterprises who we either arguing for exemptions or are loosening up in terms of, of the application of the law. But we also need to be careful. To, we need to see the labor law together with many other laws out there, yes. the tax laws, the ability to, to tender. And um, so it's a whole yes. package we've got to look at. But before we go into that, I mean, we're, we're talking, let's just say small business for a second. Um, you're right. The average employer doesn't seem to have the know-how to navigate through the myriad of labor legislation. Is the labor legislation applicable to all businesses equally at the moment? Um, because I know, for instance, the Employment Equity Act would have certain stipulations that are not applicable to smaller businesses. Is it the same with the Labor Relations Act? In, in the most, yes, but there are certain areas where it, it, it does have a, um, a lesser threshold for the, um, in terms of retrenchment processes, um, there are certain cut-off points right. whereby the smaller businesses are exempted or have got a lesser onus. But it's, in, it, it's not a generic factor right throughout the law. And what we're looking to do is to maybe increasing the, um, the benefits for the smaller and emerging businesses and not making right. it so cumbersome for them to comply yes. with certain elements of the law. And that's what we want to explore. Okay. The CCMA would be good areas that one can start exploring in yes. terms of making specific interventions. But maybe we can talk about we can that a bit later. Leon, you wanted to yeah, comment well, on What the Free Market Foundation is concerned about is actually not big business or small business or workers for that matter, okay. but the unemployed. And uh, what you need to do for them, they are more important. Yes. Uh, small businesses, we love and we propagate them and we think the it's environment It's about should jobs, be good. basically. Yeah, but the issue is the unemployed. So yes. uh, it's quite right, Vic's quite right, there should be some relaxation for mm. SMMEs, for small informal businesses that are just simply not sophisticated enough or not rich enough to deal with the, the labor dispute resolution mechanisms or the registration and compliance mechanisms or whatever. So that needs to be addressed. The other uh, probably more important thing is you should exempt the unemployed. People who are unemployed should be allowed to take whatever job they can get. So yeah. there should be some sort of exemption certificate unemployed people get that gives them a period of a year or two or whatever it is, if they've been unemployed for, say, six months or a year, that they can go and take whatever job they wish right. under some very minimal condition that's laid out in some departmental yes. conditions of employment for the unemployed. Yes. Now, the government does this, by the way, and it's make-work schemes. So all we're saying is that the unemployed should be able to get that sort of job anyway. Yes. And then the other important I'm, thing I'm sorry, is... Leon, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're running, running out of time. Of time. Um, Vic, would you like to comment on the unemployment issue? Well, I think we'd like to see it easier for the unemployed to get into the market, but it has yes. to be done on a regulated basis because what Labour continually show is that there's often an abuse of that situation. And so we're arguing for the ability for part-time workers, for casual workers to enter easier, in, easier into the market. Right. So the principle that Leon's talking about, yes, and we just need to understand how and when and where that can take place so that we don't find ourselves going back into a realm of an abuse of, of, of worker rights yes. and, um, and, and an abuse by maybe a small minority, but which upsets, the, upsets yes. the apple cart for the majority. Yes. It appears that yet again the time has flown by and we, we've run out of it. Um, I'd like to thank you both for joining me in the studio. I hope to have you back on the show again in the future. Uh, thank you. And to the viewers at home, thank you and good night. Law at Work is sponsored by Parrot for Nickirk, Woodhouse Machulo, leading labour law specialists representing businesses throughout South and Southern Africa, as well as Case Law, the quick, fast and easy labour law search engine.